I want to welcome today a lovely returning guest, and that is the amazing Valerie Green. Welcome, Valerie. Thanks so much, Michelle. I'm so happy to be here. And, um, you know, 2021, I think many people are looking forward to turning over a new leaf and really attracting what we want now that hopefully uh, we can sometime this year start being able to meet new people. And uh, but obviously what we're going to be talking about is how you can attract the love that you want now, regardless of what time it is. But I think 2021 is a very special time to set a powerful intention for that. For those of you that don't know Valerie, she's a love and relationship coach, and she has amazing things to share. She does incredible work in the world. And I just love the opportunity to interview her and partner with her. And she's going to be talking about three mistakes that sabotage love and how to attract the love you want. And so, Valerie, I know everybody's anxious for us just to jump right in. So let's do it. So yeah. I want to start exploring um, this topic, the three mistakes that sabotage love and how to attract the love you want. So before we jump into the three things, I wonder if you can just tell us a little bit about why you chose this topic and and what, you know, and what inspired you to share this with us today. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I mean, I identify these three mistakes because they're the three mistakes that I still make sometimes, <laughs> you know, truth be told. Um, but that when I make them, the, you know, my husband and I argue and we feel disconnected. And when I instead use the skills that I'll share in this interview, then we have really amazing intimacy and connection, you know. So, um, you know, that's why I really focus on these three and um, you know, obviously, uh, there's a lot more that I could teach than is in 30 minutes. But um, so a little bit more about my story briefly is that, gosh, I mean, I, I'm really good at helping people in whatever phase of the relationship they're in, because I've just had a very, um, in some ways, uh, inspiring and in some ways, challenging relationship history. Um, that I was married in the past, and now I'm, I'm remarried to a, a very wonderful man. Um, and my ex husband's also wonderful, but I chose him um, not really understanding out of a subconscious belief that I didn't want to be controlled by a man. And so I chose men that were more easygoing and allowed me to make the rules and the plans. But then um, I would feel like I was overburdened and I would criticize him for not doing enough or I would tell him what to do and then he would get pushed away. And so I was in that pattern all throughout my 20s and even, you know, throughout my uh, marriage to my ex-husband. And so those are part of the mistakes that I'll talk about because I was really in my masculine energy and I was really pushing for things and trying to control things. Um, and, um, so th those relate to the first two mistakes. And I treated men like I would treat my girlfriends and then I'd wondered why they would lose romantic interest. And so that's what really put me on a journey towards studying with the most uh, well-known relationship teachers and relationship uh, researchers in the world and really learning what is it that makes relationships last. And so I started coaching in 2005 and really use my tools in the trenches. And when I met my current husband, he said that he didn't want to get married. And so, but by then I already knew um, how to walk my talk and how to embody my feminine energy and how to share my feelings and desires and vision in an inspiring way. And then um, through just working with women over the years, I wrote a book. I didn't even mean to, but I wound up putting everything that I teach into practice. And I wrote a book called The Commitment Roadmap about how to inspire a man to commitment. Um, and uh, I basically shared a lot of case studies over the years that my clients have used to attract the love that they want, including sharing my own story. Because, um, you know, I love sharing this quote that, that my husband shares, because in the beginning, he said he didn't want to get married. And then after a couple of years of me really just being authentic and using the tools that I teach about how to really express your feelings and desires and feminine energy in an authentic way, he said, wow, you've so beyond blown away my doubts about committing to you like a bulldozer over matchsticks. And just mm -hmm. by being who you are, and it feels so amazing to create a life with you. And so um, I really just am dedicated to teaching other women how to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. 
So I know our audience is anxious to hear about the three mistakes. And I know you just kind of touched on them. Just a, yes. little, a couple of things. Give us a little hint. But what is the first mistake that you commonly see? Yeah. So the first mistake, and a lot of women have probably heard this before, is about being in your masculine energy rather than your feminine energy. And because especially women who are successful, we've been taught to use skills that are very important skills to get ahead in the business world, like analyzing and solving problems and um, really delegating and telling people what to do. Uh, and, you know, being the manager and making things happen. Right. And so, but when we try to use those skills in a romantic relationship, then a man feels that he loses his romantic interest and he just doesn't even know why, because what's required for passion and attraction in a romantic relationship is that one partners in their masculine energy and one partners in their feminine energy. Even if, uh, you're a same sex couple, I've noticed that it works best in most cases, like obviously not everyone, but what I've noticed is that if there's a lack of passion and attraction in a relationship, the first place I look is, is one person embodying the feminine energy and is one person embodying the masculine energy? Because that's what creates this arc of polarity, like two mm -hmm. poles of a battery. And there's a misconception about feminine energy being subservient. And that's not it at all. It's just that masculine energy is about, you know, setting goals and accomplishing them and analyzing and solving problems and providing. And feminine energy is just something that we're not really taught because we still live. I, I, the feminist movement, I think, was really essential for women to feel more empowered. And obviously, we still need more of that. Um, but women felt more empowered by getting into their masculine energy. And competing mm -hmm. with men and saying, I can do it, you know, just as much or better than you can. And that's great, but it doesn't work in romance because then mm -hmm. you're just fighting and competing all the time. And so what feminine energy is, is it's really embodying your feelings. It's going inward. Masculine energy is about going outwards and results. Feminine energy is about going inward, feeling your feelings, um, transforming your feelings from focusing on that you're upset that you're not getting what you want into really being inspired by the possibility of being um, in touch with what you want and really um, feeling hope and opening your heart and surrendering to what is and being receiving inspiration and intuition for how to attract what you want. It's really learning about how to attract and receive and follow your intuition and open your heart and collaborate rather than control and we just haven't, you know, as a culture, really learned how to do that. And so that's what I teach women to do. It's kind of like a partner dance. And the women I work with usually say they're, they don't like partner dancing because they've been told that they're trying to lead. And I think that's a perfect metaphor to mm -hmm. learn how to follow. And following in a partner dance isn't being subservient, right? It's um, you're really in this dance together where a good leader leads in a direction that makes the follower feel good. And it's all about following that intuitive flow. And the follower expresses herself in a way that inspires the uh, leader to lead. And so that's what feminine energy is about. And um, yeah, so in fact, um, if I can just interject here, a, a, a way I like to describe it too sometimes, in addition to the partner dancing, because that's an analogy I use as well, but I also like to think of it as like, if you're going somewhere, let's just say on a road trip, one person is going to be behind the wheel and is going to be driving, and the other person is going to be the passenger. Well, as women, we're perfectly capable of driving the car. Right. But you know what? Sometimes it's really nice to just be in that passenger seat, to be able to enjoy the scenery, be able to maybe put the seat back a little bit, just relax and allow someone else to kind of take the wheel. Now, of course, that's with a man that you trust and who you have confidence in that you feel safe with. But, you know, I can remember because I was, I didn't get married until I was 43. And I spent over 20 years in the corporate world. And so in a lot of situations where I was competing directly with men and really had to be at times in my very strong masculine energy to, to function in that world and to succeed in that world. And I can remember after I got married to my, oh, and I forgot to say, I also drove around a lot because I did mm -hmm. a lot of on-site visits with clients and things like that. 
So when I got married to my husband and he started driving when we were doing things together, I noticed how nice it was for me to just be able to relax Mm. and be that passenger, even though obviously I was very capable of driving myself. Right. So this is just another analogy that I like that kind of goes along with the partner dancing. And yet for so many of us, myself included, because I was in that category and I know that a lot of the women that we work with are also used to operating more in that masculine energy and in ways and in certain areas of our lives that serves us well, doesn't always bring us what we want the most of in our love lives. It doesn't exactly. always give us that satisfaction. And so the sense of feeling like you want to control and that you want mm-hmm. to be in charge and you're kind of showing up as the best man in the room. It's like trying to have two people driving the car at the same time. If you're with yes. a masculine man. Yes. Or backseat driving. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. Um, yeah. And I mean, when, when me and my husband met, um, we met at a, a friend's retreat and, um, we were in a, we took a kayak ride together on the lake and he asked me, he's like, do you want to take one of the oars and row with me? Or do you want to let me do all the work and you can just relax? And it was like the most amazing question to be asked. Cause I'm like, oh, wow, of course I want to just relax. I mean, it was just a really beautiful, romantic, uh, way to, to connect. Um, but I mean, that's a great analogy too. But a lot of, a lot of women think, you know, within this mistake that feminine energy is just receiving and then you have to just accept whatever he does. Because if you tell him to do something different, you're in your masculine energy. And so that is the second mistake, which is telling a man what to do um, rather than learning how to collaborate in a feminine way. Because this is actually what makes us feel better if we're feminine women is just that we haven't learned how to do it. Like telling a man what to do and butting heads and arguing just doesn't feel good. Right. right? Or, or even if he does what you tell him to, there's a way where then we lose respect for him, you know, right. we just do whatever we want. And that's, that's a, a, something that a lot of people don't really talk about. It's like, why did I lose respect for him? And he's just not pulling his own weight. And it's because we're managing him. And trying mm-hmm. to control the situation if we really allow ourselves to be honest about it. Um, and so collaboration is the mindset shift that we need to have in order to really embody our feminine energy. And what that means is we're expressing our, like we're going inward, right? Because that's feminine energy going inward. What I mm-hmm. like to say is if you're going to share something and it feels really urgent, unless there's an emergency going on, then that's actually the time to go inward and alchemize our emotions so that we can express them in an inspiring way that Mm -hmm. will actually inspire him just like we would if we were the follower in a partner dance expressing ourselves in a way that inspires him because it's about accessing the beauty of your feelings and you may have to feel the anger and the disappointment and and you know uh, allow that to be expressed through journaling or movement and it's not like you can say you're angry but I find that the absence of collaboration is being in touch with what you desire and how what you desire makes you feel and how you want to feel good. And that's what really inspires a man because men are providers, masculine men, and they want to know what makes you feel good. And it's totally fine if you say I'm angry because I'm not getting it. But if you're just saying I'm angry because I'm not getting it and therefore you have to change, he'll feel controlled, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you're like, I'm angry because I'm not getting it and here's what I want and here's what that provides for me and here's how good I'll feel when I get it. And what do you think? You know, which is basically uh, what my free gift is about, is about how to express your feelings and desires in a way that really inspires him to step up and want to do the things that make you happy. Um, But collaboration goes a step further than that. So um, I'll use an example because I think most women here are are single. I have examples for married women and single women because I work with both. Uh, But for single women, I think the thing that most of my single women clients are struggling with the most right now um, when they're dating a guy, they're single, but they're dating, but they're maybe they're not exclusive yet, or maybe they are just because of the pandemic, you know? (laughs) Right. Um, It's not one person you feel safe being around. (laughs) Right. I know. And it's, it's a very odd circumstance to be in. And so, um, but a lot of my clients are in that space and they're just like, well, I don't know if he's the one because he's not stepping up and doing the things he did in the beginning. And it's just because it's harder to figure out how to do those things because, you know, what's going on right now. But, um, but he doesn't understand what that provides for her, you right. know, and if she's just like, you don't do the things that you used to do in the beginning, then he's going to feel misunderstood 
and unappreciated for what he is giving. Um, and that is the, the third mistake is not understanding the differences between masculine men and feminine women. And that's that sometimes criticism motivates us as feminine women because we're motivated by the hormone oxytocin, which has us feel connected and we want to feel more connected to the person. It's not like men don't have that, but oxytocin and testosterone actually have an inverse relationship. I know you inter interviewed John Gray a lot and he talks about this, um, mm -hmm. that like, so if, um, if a man feels connected, he actually needs to take a little space. We misinterpret that as that he doesn't care. It's actually that, you know, he needs to do manly things to feel like a man. So he wants to connect again. But so there's many mistakes that we misunderstand and understanding them helps us to harmonize those differences. But um, one of the main differences that I like to talk about um, is that men's core vulnerability is that they're doing it wrong because men are motivated by accomplishing things and being successful. Not that women aren't, but because they have most more testosterone, it's like high, uh, bigger up on their hierarchy of, of needs, higher than connection. I think women, obviously we want to accomplish things, but connection is at least equally as important. Right, um, right. It's not that it's not important to men. It's just that accomplishing things and living as purpose is more important and then relationships come second. And what I say is to women is that you should be his first priority in terms of relationships, but not his life. You know what I mean? Like he shouldn't prioritize another relationship above you if you're really, you know, creating the relationship that you want. Um, and obviously we can have a whole interview about that. Um, but so when you criticize a man and make him wrong, it really accesses his core vulnerability and he's going to feel inadequate. And he's probably not even aware that that's how he's feeling, um, but he'll be pushed away. And he'll, mm -hmm. he'll feel like, I don't want to do anything that makes her happy because she's making me feel bad and it feels bad to be around her. And then he'll just put his energy on other things where he does feel successful. And that might even be playing video games, you know, or playing sports or, um, you know, working harder at his job because he gets uh, respect there and he feels successful there. And so the key to collaboration is not making him wrong, but instead going inward and it, um, expressing your feelings and desires in a way that doesn't make him wrong, but it allows you to open up into your feminine um, creative essence, which is the essence of what you want. It might look different than what you think you want. Cause that's what control is. It's like, I need to have things my way, but the essence of what you want is always beautiful and inspiring. If you're with the right man, of course, that he'll think that. And so instead of saying, you know, you don't do what you used to do and I feel unprioritized, right? Because then he's going to feel made wrong and in inadequate. Instead, if you can express your feelings of disappointment or loneliness or whatever, but it's important that first you express the desire and what the desire provides for you. So that because if you just express your feelings like I feel disappointed, he's going to feel made wrong because men always take responsibility. Right. Um, you know, they take that it's part of what I love about masculine energy is like, he's actually taking responsibility for it all, you know, and that, that, that actually feels really, um, uh, when I tune into that, I mean, and, you know, cause I, I trust my husband that he cares about me and, uh, what's in the highest good for us. So, I mean, of course, that's also what I help women do is to work through that trust and determine if the guy they're with is trustworthy. Um, but assuming that you do trust him then it's about learning how to identify your desire and what that desire provides for you and how you want to feel because that's what's going to inspire him to make you feel good. And so I would say something like, you remember when we first met and we went on this amazing date together and you took me out to this amazing restaurant and, and then we went to a show and I just felt so cared for and inspired and that you wanted to sweep me off my feet. And look, I understand it's harder to do that now. I understand there aren't shows going on, um, but I still want to feel that feeling, you know, and I feel a little disappointed that um, we've felt disconnected lately, you know, and, and even a little angry about that, but I understand that it's my responsibility to, um, to let you know what I want and why that's important to me you know, and that, that's why I'm sharing. And so, um, you know, maybe, I don't know, would you, and then you can ask him like, 
Um, would you want to figure out how we could still have that feeling where you're sweeping me off my feet and taking me on adventures even now? Or do you want a little bit of help brainstorming that? You know, because maybe he's just like, oh, well, I don't know. It's too much work to figure it out now because it's like, I don't like hiking and what else is there to do, right? <laughs> um, so mm -hmm. it's okay to ask him if he wants to brainstorm, you know, then he'll feel supported. That's the essence of collaboration. But he might be like, oh, okay, great. Yeah, I want to take you out again. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll you know, I mean, like my husband and I are going out in adventures in VR. <laughs> but I understand that everybody wants to go into virtual reality, but you can go on fun adventures in there. And we're also going hiking because we like it. But um, you know, it's, it's about, um, creativity and creativity is feminine. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you're, um, attracting the experience that you want to feel, but first you have to really feel your feelings and get to the essence of what you desire and how, what you desire is going to make you feel, which is also the key aspect to using the law of attraction. And I feel like relationships are, uh, where the rubber hits the road <laughs> in the law of attraction, because if you're complaining about what you don't want, then you're going to push the man away. And if you're like really trusting that you can have what you want and focusing on it and communicating how you want to feel, because feelings are one of the key components of feminine energy. Mm, Expressing absolutely. Feelings and positive feelings because a man just wanna, wants to make you feel good. Um, and so that's the key skill that I teach women uh, first off when I work with them is how to express your feelings in a way that inspires a man rather than pushes him away. And because like I said, um, a lot of us express our feelings like I'm angry about this. And then he's just going to be like, stop complaining. And um, then we feel like he doesn't care. And then, you know, we can tell him he doesn't care. And then we're arguing, right? I mean, it's like I said, I, I still make these mistakes sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but when I do, I mean, he's an amazing man. So sometimes when I do, he like I've uh, we've talked about this and when I make him wrong, if he's feeling really um, resourced, then he'll be like, what are you feeling? You know, I, you're I, you're making me wrong. I'm, I'm going to ask you what you're feeling. Right. And that's that's the sign of a really uh, good man. But I had to teach him that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's another thing. There's a couple of things I just want to put the accent mark on because what you're talking about here is such a powerful and key skill to having a successful relationship with a man. And there's just a few things I want to just kind of put the accent mark on just to really emphasize them. One thing that I've found, and this is kind of where this all starts, this skill that you're talking about, is sometimes we're not really in touch with or in tune with what our feelings really mean and why we're having those feelings. And so you're talking about going within yes. and exploring those feelings because in order for us to be able to ask in a way that a man can hear and respond to in the way that we hope, we have to get clear about what is really going on inside of us. And I think yep. that sometimes women, women, especially that have been operating in the masculine for a period of time could be kind of detached from that. We're more in our yeah. Totally. And so, and, and then we can also be reactive as human beings. We can be reactive. That's from both men and women, we can be reactive. And so this, this idea of really being able to go within, this is such an important piece and such an important starting point, because if we can get clear about not only what's going on, why we're feeling what we're feeling, but what would make us feel better? What would, what would we want to request? Mm -hmm. What would we want to ask for? How would we want to ask for that support or that collaboration or whatever we're hoping to get from our man? That's a that's a really key place to start. And that's really important to do that first, because otherwise it is likely going to sound like criticism or complaining. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, that's kind of like the old saying that says, you know, the beatings will continue until morale improves. You right. know, it's like the criticism and the, and the um, and the controlling will continue until your performance improves. Well, that has the opposite effect of what's intended for sure. Totally. So that's one thing I wanted to put the um, emphasis on. And then, you know, I think it's really important, Valerie, and this, you know, is just right in alignment with what you're talking about, to not assume, first of all, don't make assumptions, period, mm -hmm. in relationships. Right, totally, yeah. Thing. But Curiosity. don't assume that based on what your feelings are, 
that this man knows what's going on inside of you or knows what's going on with your feelings. Because totally. in interviewing men, I've had the privilege of interviewing well over a hundred men over the last few years for my man panels and things like that. And so many of them have said to me, they're like, we really do want to make you happy and we really do care, but we don't know. We don't know what to do. Sometimes we don't yeah. know what you want and we don't speak hint. Right, and right, right. Not, and we're not right mind readers. And so they're like, you know, give us a lifeline here. If you want, you know, if you want more from us or if you want something from us, please at least help us out to let us know what it is you want. Right. And if we can get in touch with those feelings, this is what you're talking about, then we can share something about what's going on from that feeling kind of place. And I, and wherever possible, you know, put things in a positive term, even saying the word, what that would provide for me. Yes. That a man's going to hear that. That's going to perk up his ears because men have this natural instinct to want to provide things for you that are going to make you happy, that are going to enrich your life. And if you can share not only what your feelings are, but what what you would want and why that would be so valuable to you. And then like you're talking about, ask for his partnership or his collaboration or what he thinks about that, or if that's something that he would be willing to do, then it allows the man to say, okay, here's what she's feeling. Here's what I can provide for her that would that would help her or, or provide such and such for her and would make her feel really good. Even if it's that would really make me happy or that would really make me smile or that would feel so good to me or that would make me feel so much romantic inclination toward you, whatever. Right. Then he can respond to that in a way where it is it is likely to bring you both closer to where you want to be. He's going to get like, he knows the path to please you and that he'll get acknowledgement and appreciation for that. You won't be mad at him or holding resentments or trying to criticize or control. And you're likely to get your needs met. So it's a, it's a way for both people to feel better in the relationship. It creates a win-win. Totally. And the win-win is so key to this paradigm of collaboration. And so the question I get asked most often when uh, I, I share this is, well, what if he says, no, he's not willing to do that, you know, and it's mm -hmm. not like this isn't about using these tools to get men to do what we want, <laughs> you know, right, right. It's not not manipulative. Manipulative, right. Um, it's about discovering that win-win. And so if he says no, then it's like, oh, okay. Well, tell me more about why you don't want to do that and tell me more about what you want, you know, instead. And then collaboration is getting down to the essence of, well, what does what he want provide for him? And, you know, it's it's going deeper because this is also feminine energy. It's like, let's say he doesn't want to do the work to plan the dates, you know, like let's say that he's overburdened with work. So then, okay, so then he's looking for more ease. Right. And that's the essence of what he wants. And the essence of what you want is to be swept off your feet. You know, and those things seem to conflict on the surface, but if you take it deeper, there's always a win-win, you know, like for example, how could you provide ease for him in another way? Maybe there's something else you could take over that he's been doing so that he'll be willing to spend more time taking you out, which is higher leverage for you. Cause like, that's really what makes you happy. And maybe there's something else he's doing that he doesn't like, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like really working together, really getting curious. And I find that a lot of us just have triggers from childhood about being rejected. And so when a man says no, we feel like he's rejecting us and we can't collaborate. And so that's why it's so important um, to slow down. And so this is what we, I imagine we both do with our clients is slow the moment down, really go inward, really discover what it is that we truly want deep down, letting go of our attachment to it, looking a particular way, but still being committed to having the experience that we want and then expressing that. And then once we are so self-aware, then we could ask curious questions because men don't necessarily have anyone in their lives that ask them these deeper questions. When they spend time with each other, they like watch sports and, you know, right. have superficial conversations, usually not always, but, um, so he relies on the woman in his life to ask him these deeper questions. Like, 
with an open heart and to be receptive and so that he feels seen because that's also feminine energy. People are, you, women usually say, well, if I'm asking questions, is that masculine energy? And it just depends on what kind of questions and where you're coming from. So it, that's what I slow down and I help women recognize feminine energy questions are just curious. And um, what does he want to experience? And what is it about planning dates that feels not good to him? Is it too much work? Is it that he's not creative? <laughs> you know, whatever it is, then then accepting that, open your heart to it and being like, oh, okay, well, then if you're not creative, maybe I could come up with the ideas and then you could schedule it or like, you know, just, um, or, or how can we solve this together? You know, is a good question to ask if you want him to jump into solution mode with his masculine energy. And so collaboration is really, it's something that we're not really taught, um, especially in the workplace, because in the workplace, you collaborate creating win-wins in terms of results, right? And roles. Right. But in a relationship, it's not as much about results as, as, as it is about what you want to be feeling and experiencing together. And so it's important to switch into your feminine energy in order to do that. And that's about slowing down the moment, going inward, really feeling all your feelings and looking at, because the, the way I look at it is that feelings are either caused by a limiting belief, like you're misinterpreting the situation and that's why you're feeling bad, or... Uh, an unmet need. And the unmet need is always something that you want to experience. And so just learning how to express what it is that you want to experience and what that provides for you and why that's important to you and how that would make you feel, that's what's inspiring to the man, along with curiosity about what he wants to experience, right? And then creating it together. And if you have a limiting belief, then it's important to challenge that and to really see things with, um, you know, uh, see things I'm going to say the way they really are, but obviously I don't think usually we actually see things the way they really are, right? But it's lifting our perspective. Um, mm -hmm. At the very least, seeing his positive intention, right? Seeing what he was trying to accomplish by whatever he was doing or not doing, which is always something that he wants to experience. Um, you know, that's, it, even if it's a tragic way of experiencing that, like let's say he has a, a video game addiction or something, like, you know, that's obviously something that needs further professional attention if it's a real addiction. But it's important, even if you're going to inspire him to get help, that you see the positive intention underneath why he's doing that. Um, you know, he's doing that to escape from feeling something he doesn't want to feel or he's doing that because he feels successful and maybe he's not feeling successful at work or with you. Right. So if he feels successful with you that he knows how to make you happy and that you're working with him in a way that he wants in order to do that, then he'll be a lot more receptive to larger things that you want and really creating life together. Yeah. Yeah. So beautifully said. And this is really, I mean, I, I just so love what we're talking about here because I think this is one of the key skills that can really set you up for having successful relationships and for women that are dating you know, when you can learn to ask requests this way, you also learn whether or not this man is the kind of man who is willing and able to put effort and energy and intention into creating a beautiful relationship and collaborating with you. You know, exactly. it's like one of the ways that you can tell whether this is perhaps a long-term relationship or partnership or marriage yeah. uh, kind of situation or not. And it's not like we're trying to test. It's not a manipulative thing, but it's a way we learn more. Like you said, it's curiosity, it's discovering and how someone shows up, um, you know, gives us it when we're dating, gives us an indication of how they're going to be able to show up in a long-term relationship. And yeah. I've said many times, you know what, there's not much sexier over the long haul than someone who's there with you for you day after day, after day, after day, when you're in a long-term relationship. Yep. Yep. I know. And um, it, I, I like to say that the ma the masculine partner is the logistical leader and the feminine partner is the emotional leader. And so if we embrace that, then it is our responsibility to inspire him to what it is that we want to experience. And I completely agree. It's like a lot of women think that, especially in the beginning of a relationship, the first few dates, it is, of course, just about observing him and seeing what he wants to do all on his own, just because that's his character. But if you want something different, a lot of women think you have to just um, accept it. And I completely agree with what you said. It's 
it's an ex- learning how to express your feelings and desires in a way that inspires him that then you'll be able to know whether he's able to be inspired. That's um, right. And cause that is what makes a relationship last because people always grow, you know, people always change. And so if you can inspire him to grow and change in the direction that is in both of your highest good, you know, cause you're really, that's your intention and that's what you're expressing he'll feel like he can't live without you because you know that like you're the source of inspiration. You're his muse. Um, and you know, that that's what I love to teach women is how to be his muse. Cause it's, it's such a wonderful, um, you know, happy, energized, inspiring place to be. Like I feel so uplifted and, and so happy and so inspired when I am being his muse. Um, and, uh, to inspire him towards what he wants and to inspire me towards what I want from my feminine energy. Cause if I tried to say, here's what I think you should do, right. Then he'll like feel controlled. I mean, he's a nice guy, so he might not say that in the moment, but I can t- tell in his body language, right. He's just like, okay, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but, but if I'm in, if I'm going inward and I'm saying like, it's so important to me that we, you know, have more adventures together right now because I feel kind of isolated and we can't meet new people right now. And so it's so important that we, we keep discovering new adventures together in order for me to feel fully alive and excited um, to, you know, build a life with you. And of course he's going to want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I've just loved what we've been talking about today, because this is a huge part of the work that I do. And obviously, it's a huge part of the work that you do. And I just so resonate. We're like right in sync on this. And I, like I said before, I think this is one of the most powerful, powerful ways that you can create a real partnership, the kind of partnership that people really deeply long for. So I'm so grateful, Valerie, for what you've contributed. This is really, really important. And I know it's going to help a lot of people. Yeah, thank you so much. And you too. I mean, you had such helpful examples. And, you know, I feel really in sync with what you're saying, too. So I mean, I think it just shows how um, important this information is to have fulfilling relationships. So happy for everyone joining us. We really want to inspire you and help you be in that place of possibility in this brand new year. So thanks everybody for joining us. And thanks once again, Valerie. Thank you, Michelle. Bye-bye for now.